Good afternoon, and I'm your talk show host, Terrence Perry. This is Lifelong Learners, and today we will be, be talking about uh, suicide prevention awareness, and I have two guests that will be speaking with us today. Um, my featured guest today is Missy Wims Wright, and she's going to be sharing uh, the inaugural event, Forever My Asia. Uh, Missy, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thank All you. right. I appreciate you coming on today. I was looking forward to having you. Um, and just want to kind of uh, introduce the audience to you um, in just a minute. Um, but before I do, I just want to talk about um, a little bit about the awareness of suicide prevention that we'll be, be, um, we'll be making several points about that today. Um, but in the process of bringing out those points, um, I want you to share with the audience um, a little bit about how you got involved with this event. And, of course, um, that was the, the passing of your daughter, Asia, that, that we want to talk about today. Um, so, uh, if you will, just uh, before I do, let me introduce my producer, Amnon. How you how you doing? Hello, Terrence. I'm fine. How are you? All right. And just want to kind of uh, segue in. Um, and, Missy, uh, can you just give us a little background about the uh, upcoming event, um, that is forever my age and just and, and just tell us a, a little bit about the event that's coming up December the the fourth third. the third mm -hmm. okay so can you kind of just share a little bit uh, about that forever my Asia um event is um about my daughter Asia Shade Bobbitt that passed away December the fourth of two thousand and fifteen um the nature of death the cause of death was suicide. So I thought of um, doing something um, different, and um, what I thought about doing was uh, bringing awareness to suicide. So I put this event together with Elise Cunnings, uh, Cheryl Cunnings, Ed Jones, and um, some other great people. We came together, and we decided that we're going to have um, an event, um, um, roundtable, and just talking and educating um the community or whoever comes to the event about suicide um, prevention and um, awareness of suicide. Okay, so you so you all are having a roundtable event uh, that's going to take place. Um, at that roundtable is going to be what um, I guess act, uh, advocates for suicide prevention. Um, who's going to be at that at that roundtable? Oh, we're going to have a mental health agencies, um, uh, the other 10 uh, mental health agencies, several other mental health agencies. We're going to have um, different type of vendors. We're going to have speakers. We're going to have um, actual people that um, are struggling um, with uh, mental health. We're going to have RPD speaking um, because this, this affects everyone. It, it's not just something that one person go through. So we have all, all all type of great people that's going to be there. We're going to have a praise dance. Um, just uh, you have to be there. Fifteen, okay. fifteen, cross league. You, you know, I don't want to give all the goods away. Okay. <laughs> Let me. Uh, who uh, now? Uh, who's this? Um, uh, uh, who's this friend that you have with you today? Um, that's also a part of the um, the Forever My Asia event. Uh, would you introduce her to to the audience? And just kind of let us know who she is. Yes, this is Elise Cummins. Um, her husband is Arturo Cummins. That they, they had re featured my daughter in their magazine. Um, she was featured in their magazine, and I'll let her explain who she is and how we. <laughs> Thank you, Terrence, for having me on the show along I with Missy. You. Um, we're, I actually represent Agape Love Outreach Ministries, and we um, have an education project called the RT Studios Project, and we are partnering with Missy and several other great people and agencies here in Raleigh and the surrounding areas to uh, put on Forever My Asia, the inaugural event. We're really excited to have, just like Missy said, motivational speakers, some special performances, um, just some great things to bring awareness to suicide prevention and just mental health resources here in uh, Raleigh and the surrounding areas. We really want to be a voice for people who don't have a voice anymore, like Asia, and uh, we want to prevent, uh, we want to bring awareness to preventing um, suicide and other mental health um, issues here in our city. Okay. Well, 
I appreciate both of you for being here. Um, and I also just want to thank the audience for, for tuning in and just want to let the audience know um, that if they want to call in and, and they have questions and want to uh, or comments, to call in at 919-518-9773. Again, we're talking about suicide prevention awareness. Um, we have our, uh, our, my special guest, uh, Missy Williams Wright, and uh, the passing of her daughter last year, um, uh, Asia, and the inaugural event that's coming up is uh, this weekend. Um, it's Forever My Asia. And part of what I want to kind of do, Missy, is just kind of um, get a little background from you um, as to um, when we're talking about suicide awareness, um, just some of the, I guess, the event um, that happened last year, I guess, you know, the signs that we oftentimes miss, um, but looking back um, at hindsight, um, were there some signs of Asia? Um, I know she had, just gra she had graduated high school, um, had got into the Bennett College, yeah. Um, and I remember over the summer that we were um, we were doing some work with Torchlight Light and we were doing some advocacy stuff in the community. Um, and But were there any signs after then, I, I, I guess between the time, I know when she graduated high school, um, I remember you, you were saying that that was one of the um, greatest moments in her life, just the way she was, how animated she was that day um, with the fact that she had graduated. Can you kind of just take us there a, a little bit um, as to, I guess when she graduated, the um, excitement and exhilaration that she was feeling, and, and did you see any of that change, um, I guess, over the the months after then, uh, when she got in school, got in college? Over the, the morning of graduation, Asia was so happy. She was jumping around like a jumping bean. And she was just saying, I did it, Ma, I did it, I can't believe, you know, I'm graduating high school. She was calling everybody on the phone. Um, she was so excited that my dad came from Syracuse and his wife, um, he, she was excited that the family that drove down from New York came, and she was just so happy. And she just, was, I, t I heard her talking to her friend on the phone, and she was like, you know, a lot of um, my friends didn't make it, you know, and a lot of girls that I went to school with, they had kids, and you know, that's not my story. I'm just so happy. I'm excited about going to college. So she was just excited. She was so happy. <laughs> you said that was one of the that was one of um, the most excited as uh, most the, one of the most exciting times that you've seen her. How excited uh, uh, that she was. Oh. But also, you also had said that she was um, just a perfect daughter. Um, and can you just kind of just share a little bit about? What type of daughter that Asia was um, growing up, and uh, you say she was just a humble, uh, sweet, sweet girl. Yes, Asia was sweet from day one. Um, she was a server. She was a giver. She would help anybody. Um, she was so loving, very humble. Um, it's nothing that she wouldn't do for a person. You know, she always wanted to help people. She was. I remember her in third grade in New York, and she said, Mommy, my friend told me that her mother don't have nothing for her for Christmas. Can we adopt her for Christmas? <laughs> third grade. And I was like, oh, okay, you know. And I used to, as a, as a mother, I, I did so many things with my kids. I came, I remember coming to her class and dressed up, I was dressed up as Santa Claus. <laughs> and I remember, and I had gifts for everybody in the class. And I remember the little girl that she had asked me to adopt for Christmas. I gave her like six gifts. Mm -hmm. And Asia was so excited. You know, she was always the type of, type of child that she wanted to give um, her anything. If someone didn't have anything, she was willing to give up her stuff. I remember times when she was in high school and she went to Kathleen McCulley Catholic School in ninth grade in uh, New York. How... A lot of girls' parents never came to visit them. She would always ask me, could they come home with us for the weekend? You know, she always was was, was giving and loving and, you know, always uh, want to serve. We all, My kids, I raised them and uh, us feeding the, the homeless. And even uh, it was a time of my life when I was homeless. But I still we still went and served 
and fed the homeless. They didn't know we was homeless, but it was just things that age that I instilled in my kids at a young age. Um, to, to, to be given and to serve. And out of all of my kids, Asia is one of the kids that, that just love to, to serve. And, she, you know, she was very given and loving, loving person. And you're the, you're the mother of five, five kids, and Asia is the middle? I'm mother of six. Six. And she, so she's the middle? She's the, middle. the third baby girl. The third, third baby three girl. girls. The first, the first three girls, she was the third one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, um, but also um, in just looking at some of um, um, the, the 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 conversations and the involvement in the uh, the parent awareness and j- just being aware of uh, I guess just suicide uh, awareness like signs. Um, when you're looking back, were there any telltale signs of depression or anything in Asia that that was different than what her um, normal activity was. Can you recall anything that may have made you think that 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 some may have been been going on with her, or um, did she say anything during during those during those times? Well, I can think of two weeks before um, the accident. Um, I remember us having a conversation. The week of Thanksgiving, that Monday, before we went to pick her up from college. And she had stated that college wasn't all what it cracked up to be. And I asked her, why would you say that? What's wrong? And then she said, well, Ma, a lot of things happen in college that you just don't know about. And I said, like what? She said, a lot of, um, I don't know. I'm just going to be honest and say what she said. She said, a lot of girls get gang raped. Mm-hmm. And I asked her, did, was is she a victim? Did that happen to her? And she said, no, Mommy, it didn't happen to me. She said, but it happens a lot and nobody talks about it. Mm-hmm. I said, really? And she said, yeah. And I said, wow. And she said, my college is not what, what you think it is. That sticks out because that's something she said to me. Bef- that was her last, well, she came home, that was like her last week of college. And when she came home, you know, she was she was always to herself, but she was a little bit more to herself. Did she kind of say she she didn't want to go back? She didn't want to go back to college? Um, during the, it was during the Thanksgiving break mm-hmm. uh, last, last year. Mm-hmm. Um, when they were when they, when they were home for for Thanksgiving before she came home. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, the 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 week because she came on that Wednesday. It was like that Monday. Okay. Uh, before Thanksgiving. Did she go back? Um, Mm-mm. after she didn't go back after. She didn't go back because she was um. She had that Monday that she was supposed to have been back to school. She was scheduled to take a um, finish up her her paperwork for the army because she was going to go into the army reserves. So she didn't. She never made it. She never even made it to that Monday. She she died that that um Friday after Thanksgiving, after Black Friday that next Friday. Right. So um just 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 kind of going forward with the event that that you all have coming up uh, uh in uh. When is that on Saturday? It's going to be Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, are you all going to be talking to, um, I guess, parents, teachers, and family members about um, those signs of, um, you know, when you see changes in a person that may um, raise a, a red flag that there may be some going on? Because mo- oftentimes with teenagers uh, between the age of 16 to young adults, age 24, um, they go through a lot, you know, uh, a lot of, I, I'm going to say like roller coaster emotions. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and during that time, during that time, there's a, a lot of emotions that's going on in their lives. But will you all be talking about those, those, uh, those signs and, and things that, that, that you can kind of do, um, the mental health stuff, if there are resources that they can be led to, uh, w- w- would, would these be things that you all are talking about during the event uh, that's coming up Saturday? Yes, we're going to be talking about that. 
We're going to have um, a therapist there. We're going to have a therapist there. We're going to have pamphlets there. We're going to, um, all the resources is going to be in the building that day. Um, we're going to try to reach the community to the best of our ability. And when you say the age of six, 16 to 24, yeah, but the, um, the ages from 10 to 14 African-American boys are committing suicide. The numbers are rising. Um, that's the, um, suicide is the number, the number two death in, in North Carolina. And people don't, they don't realize this. And I, I never knew none of this information until it came to me, until it hit me, hit home. Suicide is something that's in the closet. No one talks about it, but suicide numbers are rising. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's either rising or staying flat. Number two, number two. Um, I if, if at least can share a little bit about the event and okay. what all the things that we're gonna be doing. Do we know why? <clears throat> do you know? Do we know why the suicide um, for teens and young adults is is rising? And it's like I said, it was it was number three and and number two as the uh, causes of of mm -hmm. uh, death uh, by teenagers during that age. Um, so. Can you kind of speak to what's going mm -hmm. on uh, uh, with 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 that population right now that's that's causing them to feel a a, a sense of hopelessness? Um, uh, what's yeah? Just kind of share what's going on with okay. with them and what we can do as um, adults and family members uh, if we see some of those those signs. What can we do to advocate um, to, to to prevent uh, you know those? Mm -hmm. Those, those type of things? I think it's important to know that sometimes there are no signs and sometimes there are signs. And it really depends on the person and the situation. I can't speak to why numbers are rising. Okay. Um, I would say that there's a lot of reasons and a lot of us um, have either been touched by suicide or have gone through a stressful time and have you know, even thought about, had those thoughts that come to us. And I do think that one of the major ways to um, start, you know, reining in those numbers and decreasing um, the events of suicide in our state and in this country is to start, start talking about it, start doing what we're doing this weekend, um, talking about um, suicide prevention, talking about mental health resources, um, just opening up a conversation with leaders, with people who have been touched um, by suicide, by mental health issues. Um, it is something that, like Missy was saying, that a lot of us are just not talking about or we're just not informed. Uh, we don't know, you know, the statistics. We don't understand some of the feelings sometimes. Um, and so just talking with other people, um, talking about Asia's story. Asia is, is uh, living way beyond her 18 years um, with um, the way that we are talking about, you know, preventing suicide in our state and in our country. And just bringing up, you know, there were, there wasn't a whole lot going on um, that Misty could see um, with Asia. We, you know, she didn't realize and a lot of us don't realize and bringing up her story and just talking about it, I think is the first step toward, you know, decreasing these numbers and, and just bringing awareness to mental health and suicide prevention. Okay. And again, I appreciate you all for, mm -hmm. for um, just what are you doing? Just um, particularly you, Mr. for just taking that advocacy role mm -hmm. um, now and, and just, you know, continuing to go forward um, to, um, you know, just not let let Asia's uh, death be in vain, um, and, sh and and being able to share with others, um, you know, just to bring mm -hmm. awareness to not just um, mothers, but but families in general, uh, uh, teachers, um, you know, parents, just and and just making it aware that other teens, uh, because this is on the rise, is uh, rampant, uh, uh, actually across America. The the, um, the 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 suicide rate for teenagers has increased, and uh, just to speak on some of the warning signs that uh, that I'm aware of that do take place, um, a, a lot of times there, uh, I've worked mm -hmm. in mental health for 33 years, mm -hmm. and 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 I've worked with teenagers for 30 32 of those years, and so 
that was part of my uh, my training and that's just a part of my background in studying is looking at um, changes in personality, mm -hmm. changes in behavior, um, and other risk factors um, that that, um, that that comes to the forefront when when a teen's uh, behavior change. A lot of times, it's um, we look at the, the 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 peer group that they may have associated with, and then they may have changed the peer group, or they may have just stopped associating with um, uh, peers, mm -hmm. you know, where, yeah. where they have been joyful and excited uh, before, and now you see that they are sad and kind of lonely and to themselves um, when, you, when they have, um, they may have uh, had a loss of appetite. They may have gained an increase of appetite, mm -hmm. but there are changes and fluctuations in their behavior, and this is true for teens. This is true for teens all the time. Um, just being a teenager as we were teenagers, you know, we go through the ups and downs, that you know, the highs and the lows um, of of our emotions. We're emotional mm -hmm. roller coasters during that age and stage in our life. Um, mm -hmm. But just being aware of when those those flows and dips are happening, um, it just we have to chime in and kind of uh, just to at what's going on uh, and look and see um, at some of the you know the the, the changes. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Sometimes there's sleep pattern change. They may have in some of yours mm -hmm. where they can't sleep. They may be sleeping too much. Um, but the, and, and these are the warning signs, but some of the preventions um, that you all have, have shared earlier was like you're doing, uh, having an event, mm -hmm. like the event that you have is coming up uh, Saturday to where you'll be talking about these, uh, these things. You're going to have mental health resources available mm -hmm. and also you're going to have therapists and, 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 and psychologists available that knows the, the warning signs, the risk factors, the, the, the triggers, and they're going to be sharing this information with, with the community. So that's one of the biggest things that I think mm -hmm. we can do um, is to have these events where we have um, mental health advocates available to share their knowledge and information with you know w with the public mm -hmm. um, yeah. again let, let me just say again to the audience anyone that that wants to call in can call in at 919-518-9773 um, if you have comments or concerns or just want to voice you know just want to voice your feelings do call into the show um, we we are taking calls and again um, Missy one of the things that that you said that um, when you were saying about Asia, um, well, what you were saying to parents in general is just to learn to to listen, mm -hmm. and 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 you were saying that you could hear uh, Asia's voice in your ear saying, "Listen, mm -hmm. listen, uh, listen." So, and, and I think that is one of the things that um, can you speak to that? Just not just as parents, but as an adult, as a teacher, educator. You know, for us to kind of just, you know, when they're speaking, I guess for us to just listen um, and kind of just sometimes it's not what they're saying, but sometimes it's what they're not saying. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it is what they're saying, but we have to kind of look a little deeper into into those, you know, what's being said um, or what's not being said. So, again, uh, let, now, let, let me ask you this. Can you all just let the the audience and anyone that wants to be at the event um, decided to know again about the event, what time it mm -hmm. start, um, where it's going to be at, and also uh, Mr. just kind of give them some information so anyone that want to get in touch with you all um, in regards to um, suicide awareness, how they can get in contact with you through social media, um, and any of, of those resources. You can actually go to forevermyasia.com. You can purchase okay. tickets there. Tickets are $10. The event starts at 6 p.m. on Saturday evening, and it will go until 10 p.m. Um, it's going to be at 1515 Crosslink Road here in Raleigh, and that's at the uh, First Cosmopolitan Baptist Church. And um, you can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash forevermyasia. Uh, we also have a phone number that you can call in, ask questions, talk to us. Um, that number is 919-714-9474.
And on the Forever My Asia page, you can also purchase tickets, but there's resources. Uh, Missy's story is up there. Asia's story is up there. You can read more and learn more about all of those things there. And you can, like I said, purchase tickets. And we would love to have you. Um, it is open to everybody, open to the entire public. Uh, we're going to have food, motivational speakers, giveaways. We're going to have performances by um, some different great people <laughs> and uh, we are really excited about it we don't give away everything but we're really excited about it and we are most excited about not only honoring Asia's memory but also just bringing awareness to suicide prevention and to mental health resources right here in our community and also I would like to add if it's a problem and you don't have the ten dollars we have people that yeah. sponsor um, whoever wants to um, come to the event. We Absolutely. will not turn nobody away. No. So if you come to that door, um, kids are invited. Mm -hmm. um, I would love for you to come join me. Come join um, uh, teenagers that's going to be there that's battling. We're going to, you know, I'm not going to say who's who, but um, these, uh, even some uh, co-workers. <laughs> it's a, um, every, a lot of people, everybody have a story. Um, but it's people that's going to be there that need your support that's here, that we need, Asia's already gone, it's nothing we can do but keep her legacy going. But for the ones that need help, we need to be there and, and come in and, you know, as come together as one mm -hmm. and as unity and uh, make this event special. You know, just come together. It's going to be a great event. You don't want to miss it. Um, it, this is a movement. We're going to keep on going and going and going and bringing awareness to suicide. Um, they made me the team leader of uh, the AS, AFSP. Um, so I'm going to be doing walks. And when I, when I do walks, uh, I, um, just come and, and join us. Um, you know, um, it's people that I met on Facebook. It's teenagers that I met on Facebook. Um, from a year ago, that um, that they'll be there. Some people's coming from Greensboro, um, Asia. Death it touched so many people's mm -hmm. lives, and, and and if you want to just be a part, if you want to support, just come. You don't have to be battling or going through anything mentally. Just come and support. You can reach me at Missy Williams Wright uh, on Facebook, and remember to look at Asia www.forevermyasia.com. And thank you so much. All right, listen. I preach. I appreciate you all for coming. I thank you all for just coming and sharing, uh, just sharing what uh, what's going on this weekend. And I hope, and of course, I'll be there. I'm looking forward to a great turnout. And just thank you all for for sharing with us uh, today. Thank you for having us. All right. And uh, as we continue on with the with the show this this evening, uh, I'll be introducing uh, my next guest, which is uh, Elliot Palmer Jr. Um, he's he's uh, a peer support specialist uh, and he's a he's a rap trainer um, in in the uh, in the field of recovery uh, and human services. Elia, how you doing? Good, Terrence. Good. How you doing today? I'm good, man. And I just want to thank you for coming in uh, and, and joining us today. And just kind of um, you've been here. Uh, Listen to some of the things that we were just just sharing about suicide prevention, um, and 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 I want to kind of segue in with what what you are doing with the with the uh, rap uh, the rap program, I mean, and I'm talking about rappers in the music scene. So <laughs> um, a lot of people may may get it twisted, but yeah. when we're talking about rap, I'm gonna let you explain okay. um, what the wellness recovery action plan and, and and so forth is all about, and just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do uh, in terms of uh, uh, the peer support training and the, the uh, rap program that you're involved with. Okay, well, well, Terrence, like I said, thank you for having me, first of all. Man, I appreciate uh, it. The rap uh, program, rap stands for Wellness Recovery Action Plan. And just as the young ladies that were just here uh, talked about the um, issues with suicide, uh, suicide prevention and awareness, that ties right in with the rap. Um, rap is about wellness. Uh, everybody in the world is concerned about their wellness. So rap applies to everybody, not just people with substance use or mental health issues, but everyone. Um, what rap does, um, rap helps people to work well uh, with their mental issues, uh, medical conditions such as diabetes, weight loss, uh, pain management, life issues such as addiction, um, smoking, trauma, um, even trauma in the sense of uh, having a 
loved one or significant other commit suicide. Uh, that not only creates a, the problem the person committed suicide, but it has a ripple effect and affects the whole community. And I'm glad to hear that event they're having. Um, RAP, uh, the RAP program, uh, it ties in with peer support. And, um, uh, being a, become people, uh, becoming a certified peer support specialist here in North Carolina, um, they have to take two courses in order to qualify to become a certified peer support specialist. One is a 40-hour peer support specialist training, and the other, they need, also need to have an additional 20 hours of training. And the RAP program uh, satisfies that 20-hour additional training for a lot of people. And it's all about wellness and keeping ourselves well. Okay. And, and just a little bit about the peer support specialist training. Um, but before you do, just tell us a little bit about how you got involved um, w with the peer support um, specialist training, uh, just how you got involved in peer support also, and just a little bit about your, uh, your back story. Um, okay. Uh, just kind of give us a little background. Okay. Uh, well, Terrence, um, through my life, my part of my experience and my story, um, I had issues with substance use or substance abuse, um, subsequently bringing about mental health issues, um, thus leading on from those to uh, part of my past is incarceration. I have been to prison. Uh, but there came a time in life when I said, I, you know, I was tired of, I wanted to do something about it and do something positive to change my life, to make a difference. And I decided, when I, once I decided to get into recovery, um, you know, as a consequence of some of my life issues, I had certain issues with my background and needing to start life over and reinvent myself and whatnot. And I found, uh, I ran across peer support. And one of the, requir the requirements for peer support is to have had some experience yourself with mental health or substance use issues. And I said, wait a minute, here's a job that I qualify for with my past? Okay, well, okay, I'm highly qualified. Uh, so... Uh, someone told me about peer support, and I looked into it, and it was a job that not only uh, provided me with a purpose, you know, uh, to give back to others and to help someone else so they don't have to go through the same things I went through, but it also provided me with a way to um, sustain myself, to not only have a job, but to make a living. You know, there's a difference in a job and, and making a living, and peer support um, supplied that. It gives me the, you know, it provides me with an opportunity to help others in the community to get well and, you know, uh, and help them guide, help guide them through some of the things that they don't have to go through the same things I did in order to get well. Okay. And let me just, um, just kind of put it out there a little bit. Now, you were one of the guys that hung out with Michael Jordan. You was on, uh, <laughs> you, you went to UNC and, yeah. and, uh, just tell us a little bit about that college experience and, and, uh, you know how that kind of just transitioned to um, a lot of the, the 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 people and you know and guys that you came in contact with, um, you know, and just that experience. Uh, okay, you know, um, doing your well, college. Well, yeah, years. Terrence. Um, I was listening to the young lady share on the last segment, and college. You know, she said that she said that her daughter made the statement, "College isn't what it's cracked up to be, Mom." Right. And I can empathize, and I can identify what she's saying. Um, yeah, well, I was in the class of um, at Carolina, UNC Chapel Hill, and I came through the same class with Michael Jordan, and we had a lot of, a lot of people there. Uh, but the thing about the college experience, uh, college was not only about book learning, it was a life experience. And uh, there were a lot of things that we were exposed to, um, maybe weren't mature enough to handle those things at the time. But that's where peer support is coming in, and peer support is so beneficial to others because as a peer support specialist, you're able to guide someone through that's going through those same issues, through those same periods in their life that you've gone through in the past. And you're help, able to help guide them so that they don't have to experience or have the same bad experiences that you did. They can, you know, handle it better. Um, that's where rap comes in. RAP is, you know, as I said, the, the name of the program is Wellness Recovery Action Plan. Mm -hmm. It's not Drug Recovery Action Plan. It's not um, Diabetic Recovery Action Plan. It's not Mental Health Recovery Action Plan. It says Wellness Recovery Action Plan. And as we know, everyone is concerned with their own wellness. 
So this plan is for everybody. All right. And and, and, and just again, uh, when I've, I've, I've known you over the years, but in recent years, but this particular past year when, uh, you know, I've been in recovery myself and I wanted to get involved in the peer support and I actually went through um, your peer support training program and also your uh, your wellness uh, a recovery action plan. Um, I, I went through that that program also mm-hmm. with you, and um, and we had a pretty good, uh, a pretty large class. We had a pretty good class, um, but also in that you have done those those classes and those trainings. Uh, but just in the in in this past year, how many people would you say that you have trained uh, and carried through those those classes um, in in just the past in just the past year? Oh, uh, well, in just in the past year, um, and I might add, I'm a certified peer support specialist, certified by the state of North Carolina, but I'm also a peer support specialist trainer for the training curriculums, uh, which is that I train for a company called NC Hope. Um, NC Hope, the HOPE stands for Helping Our Peers Excel. Uh, so I, I, do the, I facilitate the 40-hour training courses for them. I also facilitate the 20-hour RAP trainings for a company called ANSWER, which stands for New Start While Empowering Recovery, uh, which is my company. Um, between the two, Terrence, uh, and peer support is growing. It's growing by leaps and bounds. Um, I encourage all of those interested in, in the field and interested in that have backgrounds in mental health or substance use, um, have some experience in their own lives, and they're now in recovery to come out and explore the field. Uh, it's becoming, you know, the insurance and healthcare agencies have found that peer support is a very effective tool in helping others to get well. Uh, but between the two trainings, parents, hundreds of people, um, and I'm saying uh, peer support training uh, actually just opened back up, the curriculum just opened back up. So it hadn't been a whole year yet. Uh, okay. And already we have hundreds on board that are now certified and um, equipped to go out and help others to get well and stay well. So, so let me ask you this: Can you walk me through what a typical day would be like in peer support? Uh, you know, in just doing uh, peer support, um, what would a typical day be like for yourself um, doing mm. doing that type of? And and, and, and before you go there. Um, just kind of give us a definition of what peer support uh, is. What peer support is? Uh, okay. Can we define? Let, let's go ahead on and define well, it for the, the 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 general public that may not know. When we say peer support, wh- what we're talking about? Okay. Well, peer support is uh, peer support specialist is a person in recovery um, that has experience uh, in recovery from. Mental health or and or substance use issues. Uh, the peer support specialist acts as a role model. He acts as a guide uh, in navigating the systems of um, community resources, health resources, um, recovery resources. He acts as a guide to those that are uh, experiencing these issues. Uh, the peer support specialist is so valuable because. Uh, mil- many of the clinicians and the therapists out here working in the field, they don't have that life experience. They can't, you know, they, you know, they have the book experience, but so far as, um, you know, feeling those uh, those feelings of hopelessness, helplessness, uh, low self-esteem, low self-worth, anxiety, depression, um, not having a purpose. Uh, some of those feelings that, you know, it's kind of hard for someone on, that's never experienced these to empathize or understand. And the peer support specialists, that's their niche. They're able to establish the relationships with uh, people that are uh, needing help. They're able to, you know, come from a standpoint of I've been there, done that. I understand mm-hmm. what you're going through. And this is what I did when I had to go through. Okay. And and I just wanted to kind of just sh- to, to, to just get that out there because I, I know that's um, for, that's particularly what you and I do um, as as peer support specialists. Uh, that's what I do even, even as a life coach. Um, that's part of the same process. And and what's happening now is that what they're doing, they're combining and bringing together the 
experience of a peer support specialist and a life coach because in both of those elements in, in both of those trainings uh the, the 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 person has walked that walk uh and therefore they can talk the talk yeah. um but in saying that it it says that they can walk walk beside those that are trying to that are going through um, right. a lot of times when people when you're going through um that it's like you said people don't necessarily know what what you're actually going through um uh, but as a peer support specialist you know you've been through that so you know what it takes and what you've done uh and you're just sharing that experience and just being there for the other person uh in that experience you know with that experience they're not alone um yeah. they don't have to walk alone and they don't have to find those resources in the blind because uh well, not just oftentimes, more than likely the peer support specialist knows where those resources are because they have um, already used those resources. So they're, they're basically just guiding, again, mm -hmm. just guiding the um, the new person in recovery to those resources to make sure that they don't that they don't fall. And if they do fall along the way, they're they're there to help them back up. Um, same thing as life coaching. We do it's the same right. pro process. Um, but now, in your in your own wellness, um, I know that you um, you involved in fishing. I mean, I know one of your hobbies <laughs> one of your hobbies is fishing. I think you was fishing over the Thanksgiving, and you yeah. caught a fish. Um, but just kind of speak to the, the the hobbies that we have to develop. You know, when we're talking about wellness and recovery, you know, things that we have to implement in our lives. To uh, life just ain't about work. Um, and, right. and life just ain't about doing all the time, but it's also about having fun and enjoying things that you like. And, and, and I know yours is one of yours is, is, is fishing. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that fishing, it may not be so much the fishing, Terrace. Just mm -hmm. uh, I like to call it palm tree therapy. If I'm at the beach in the water, that's mm -hmm. what I'm there for. I hope I catch a fish while I'm there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that all falls into the wrap. Uh, that's mm -hmm. why I'm so adamant. That's why I'm so passionate about the RAP Wellness Recovery mm -hmm. Action Plan. Mm -hmm. why, I decided, why I decided to become a facilitator for RAP. Uh, because I wanted to promote wellness in others. I found RAP worked in my life. Uh, and with that, uh, it ties into the concepts of RAP. Uh, what you're saying is, uh, you know, okay, we get well, but we have to stay well. Um, yeah. So, for instance, uh, the disease of addiction. Anytime you see a word or some something that has the I O N on the end end of the word, uh, that shows that word that that uh, whatever that issue is has many components. So addiction has many components. It isn't just putting down the drugs. You know, you say people are a drug addict or they had a drug addiction. Okay, you put down the drug, you're still left with the addict. Okay, so now here comes the wrap. The wellness recovery action plans helps me to work on the addict. Helps me to work on the individual. Uh, the concepts of rap, we follow those. Uh, the first one is hope. You know, hope mm -hmm. that I can not only get well, but stay well. Second one is I take personal responsibility for my recovery. Thirdly is education. Educate myself about myself and about my issue, about my disease. Fourth is self-advocacy. We have to practice self-advocacy. That's the way we get well and stay well. No longer do I sit in the corner and let someone dictate or make decisions on my behalf. I self-advocate. And, pro and do things for myself, have certain rights that I, I, I have. Uh, the last is support. Uh, it's important that people find uh, some form of support to help them along the way. Peer support supplies all of these. We help people to self-advocate, support, um, educate themselves about themselves. So peer support and rap tie together, and they all tie and they both tie together to help a person stay well. And uh, that's what I like. That's what, you know, uh, now I have a purpose. You know, I don't just get up and have a job. I have a purpose each day. All right. And, again, too, like I said, with the Wellness Recovery Action Plan, it kind of gives you a, uh, you know, it helps you build that sense of sanity uh, in in your own personal life. I know um, that's the way I have to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I mean, that's, that's what the program is really all about. Uh, but in saying that, um, can you let let, let the uh, listening audience know uh, how they can get in contact with you? Any organization or agency that needs you to facilitate a rep training or uh, um, to implement that for their employees or 
um, how can they get in contact with you? And again, I think you said it's a forty-hour, it's a forty, it's, it's it's a four-hour course, and it's also another additional twenty hours for the wellness uh, uh, action, uh, a recovery action plan. Okay. Uh, but how can those agencies get in contact w with you to get those um, those trainings and certifications? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, let me uh, add that the wellness mm -hmm. recovery action plan was developed by Mary Ellen Cole. Okay. okay, it's not my plan, <laughs> uh, but it's a plan I follow that keeps me well. Uh, but contact information, my phone number is 919-670-7738, 919-670-7738. Uh, you can also contact me through a new start while empowering recovery, um, email a period nswer at yahoo.com. Also like us on Facebook. Or at a new start while empowering recovery. Uh, for peer support training, which is the 40 hour portion, um, you go to nchopetraining.com. Okay? And if you want to take both classes, you can go to the nchopetraining.com website and they have registration information, all that you need to know uh, so that you can take the peer support training and the rap, and start a new career for yourself. Start a new way of life. And also, mm -hmm. NC Hope uh, training, uh, Peer Sports Specialist training on Facebook. Look forward to seeing and hearing from you. All right, El Elliot, man, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you sharing the um, the, uh, the the rap program and also the, the peer support uh, uh, specialist um, and just being a peer support uh, advocate yourself. Um, I know you was a help. Uh, helped to me um, over the past five months or so in just being involved and in, in just learning more about peer support, getting getting certified myself and also um, and and being trained. Um, so I appreciate you. Um, thanks for coming on. And, and I, I want to have you on again uh, toward the beginning of the year because um, I want to go in more depth about the the uh, training and the wellness program. Um, so we'll have more time to where we can talk in more detail okay. about that. So just thanks for coming on, and I appreciate you. I want to thank the audience for tuning in today. Um, as every Tuesday, we're, we're here at 2 o'clock from 2 to 3. We'll be here next Tuesday. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a blessed week. <coughs>